Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last class, we had seen how the chamber pressure and thrust varies with uh, burning surface area and uh, throat area and initial temperature. In this class, let us look at uh, how to design a grain. Okay. Uh, typically, uh, if you are in an industry, uh, what is given to you is a thrust time curve. Okay. Uh, project managers will hand down to you a thrust time curve and you are supposed to meet it with whatever propellants that you have. Okay. Please remember uh, whenever we are talking about uh, thrust time curve, uh, if you remember the thrust equation F is equal to right. Now, rho p and isp are fixed depending on your choice of the propellant and uh, nozzle right the only parameters that you can vary are ab and r dot uh, let's say you are given a propellant with a particular r dot how do you then design the grain to meet the thrust time requirement okay the thrust time requirement can be uh, varied depending on the applications okay uh, launch vehicle might have a thrust time curve something like this right uh, whereas a missile might have a very different thrust time curve This might be the thrust time requirement for a launch vehicle whereas this could be the thrust time requirement for a missile. Typically in a missile uh, you would want to uh, take off at very high uh, acceleration so as to overcome any uh, wind loads and other things right. So you would have a very high boost thrust after which you will come down and uh, try to maintain the sustained portion for a long time so as to be able to reach the target okay so how do we meet all these different requirements if we are given a propellant whose density and isp is are fixed and r dot very little to play around with okay the margin for playing around with r dot is smaller so how do we design such a propellant Now, if you remember our uh, earlier discussion, we said uh, R dot is nothing but burn rate along the local normal. Right. We can uh, now look at different kinds of uh, geometries. Firstly, let us look at uh, neutral burning grain that is
if you have a cigarette burning configuration then as time progresses the burning surface will move in this fashion right now uh, how does it look like if you have a tubular grain if you have a tubular grain and let us say it is burning from inside to outside, you will have concentric circles right. The same if it is burning from outside to inside, this will give you a progressive grain As I said earlier, this R dot you have a small amount of flexibility here, not a whole lot. Now we have to get everything that we want or a lot of it through the burn, uh, burning surface area variation, right. So if you have, uh, if you have to design a large motor, uh, large thrust motor, then uh, if you cannot have an end burning grain and if you are still desiring something like a neutral burning uh, up to some portion and then progressive, how do we go about designing such grains, okay. Uh, remember uh, we in our earlier discussion, we talked of something known as uh, star grain or star geometry and we said that it can give neutral regressive or progressive depending on how you design the uh, shape right. So let us look at uh, how that is possible right. Before we uh, get into a star grain we have to look at uh, how the propellant burns let us say we take a burning surface like this this is known as uh, spike singularity okay let us say it is burning along the local normal like this how would it look like after some time this would move parallel right and this would also move parallel this point here would get extended into an arc of a circle let us say this distance is y this would also be y and this arc would also be of y radius okay. So, a point here uh, sorry this is not a this is a recess singularity okay. So, a point here the burning surface area is increasing right it was a point here and the burning surface area is increasing depending on this arc length right. The longer the time you burn it for uh, this arc length keeps on increasing. So you want to get uh, if you have this kind of a singularity a progressive burning right.
Now let's look at uh, how to get the uh, regressive burning if you have something like a spike singularity okay let's say it's burning in this direction after some time what would happen sorry if it were burning in this direction after some time this surface moves in this parallel direction this moves in this parallel direction so you would be ending up with losing certain surface area right the surface area keeps on reducing and over a period of time probably it will become horizontal right so this uh, will lead to regressive burning So, if we can have a judicious mix of uh, the progressive and regressive burning or if we can have spike and uh, recess singularities, then we have a chance of having a tubular grain and then even then having something like a neutral burning. If you remember if you have a tubular grain like this, uh, you will always end up having progressive burning. right? But if you remember we need a large surface area in order to get the required thrust so and we also are uh, looking for something like neutral burning for a significant portion of the time so having something combining spike and recess singularities will lead to what is uh, known as uh, neutral burning up to some time and that is possible with a star grain if you look at uh, this picture here on the right hand side you have the star grain okay and uh, this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, point star grain right now what kind of singularity is this a is uh, a is a recess singularity okay it is burning uh, in this direction so a is a recess singularity and b is a spike singularity so if you combine these two you will hopefully get the neutral burning okay so that's the idea of having a star grain on the left hand side you have a picture here wherein uh, you have a rectangular slot okay burning from inside to outside if you look at all the corner points a b c d right what kind of singularities are all of these this is a recess singularity because if you look at after some time the surface area is increasing okay and if it progresses like this in this direction in this direction there will come a stage wherein you will have some propellant unburnt okay that portion of the propellant that is unburnt is called as sliver loss okay
at the time of burnout is known as sliver loss. So, if you look at uh, the propellant that we had So, towards the end if right uh, this corner point reaches here much faster and therefore you will have some portion of it remaining unburnt this is known as sliver loss and uh, as a designer you would want to minimize this there is no point in carrying propellant on board and not utilizing it is it is a waste in that sense right. So, you would want to minimize sliver loss and uh, if you look at uh, the reason for ha wanting to have a neutral burning right why do we uh, want to have a neutral burning huh? uh, no it is not related to sliver loss. Uh, yes, uh, if you look at the structural structural utilization, okay. Uh, let me first draw that figure. If you look at a thrust time curve. If you have let us say a regressive burning okay, and if you have progressive burning this is also the variation in some sense with the chamber pressure F and P C go in a similar fashion okay what pressure do you design your casing for it is for the highest pressure right in this case you design it for this pressure and in this case you design it for this pressure although you are designing the case for the highest pressure you are utilizing it for a very small time right if you were able to in some sense utilize the entire burn time at that pressure uh, your thrust or the uh, specific impulse would have been higher right. You are not doing that and you are trying to uh, kind of uh, utilize uh, that highest pressure only for a small time. So, uh, from this perspective it is better to have a neutral grain as far as possible. this part is the ignition peak we will come to that a little later in the course. So, if this is the um, mean pressure at which it is operating and if it is a constant then you can design the motor based on this pressure with a certain factor of safety and you will be utilizing it for a much larger time and therefore, you will have the benefit of a higher ISP ok. That is the reason why we would want to have a progress uh, neutral burning for as long as possible.
Now let us look at uh, star grain. If you look at this 6 point star grain that we have here, you see that if you consider this segment, right, this small segment here because of symmetry, if you if you consider not just that small segment, if you consider the segment here, if you draw a line from A to the center and along B, if this is the origin A O B, that segment is good enough because that is the segment that is repeating. Because of symmetry, it is good enough if you consider only that segment. Okay. Now, that is the segment that is shown here in this figure. If you look at it, this is going from 0 or uh, origin O, A and B. Let this length 0 to A, B, L. Okay. Now, what kind of a singularity is this point B? Spike and uh, A is a recess singularity. So, there is uh, with burning let us say it has burnt up to some uh, web thickness of y. Okay. If it has burnt some web thickness of y, the position of A will be shifted to A dash. A dash to C is the arc that you are getting as an increase in the burning surface area. right? And uh, there is a reduction in the burning surface area. If you look at a to d is a to b is the surface area right as this point b moves from uh, b to b dash the surface area is reduced from a to b to c b dash okay so there is an increase in surface area there is a decrease in surface area if these two are equal then we will get neutral burning that is burning surface area is not changing with Okay. So, let us try and derive the condition that will give us neutral burning. If you look at uh, this figure uh, from the previous figure, this is uh, right, you have uh, this is a 6 point star. Okay. Now, the n here is 6. Fine. If you have a 6 point star, this uh, angle would be 2, 2 pi by n, no, uh, this angle would be pi by n, okay, because you are uh, also considering uh, the other portions. So, this angle would be pi by n, and if you look at uh, this angle here, d b b dash. This angle is nothing but theta by 2. Okay. This will be given to you. So, this angle is theta by 2 and uh, this angle you know. So, you can calculate the other angle that is A B O. A B O will be nothing but pi minus theta by 2. And uh, so, therefore, we can calculate the angle O A B, right. We know uh, the other angle A O B is pi by n. So, we need to calculate O A B. We also know A O B is nothing but pi by n, then we can calculate angle O A B what will this be? The entire angle uh, the sum of all the angles in a triangle is pi. So, you will have pi minus So, 
so this two cancel out and uh, you will get sorry this is plus this plus this so you will get uh, minus pi by n plus theta by 2 as the angle OAB. Okay. Now, you know this angle, the other angle that is BAC is a right angle, right. So, that is 90 and uh, OAA dash is a straight line. So, this angle is 180. So, 180 minus 90 minus this angle will give you A dash A C. So, we have determined this angle, this angle this what we had noted earlier was A C is the increase in the burning surface area and uh, B D is the decrease in the burning surface. Now, we have taken a two dimensional grain and we need to look at this in depth okay, into the uh, plane is uh, the depth right. So, this is a two dimensional grain. So, that remains constant. So, we are essentially calculating a burning perimeter right. So, for neutral burning A dash C should be equal to okay. Now we have determined uh, the angle A dash A C. So the length of the arc A C would be uh, y into the angle itself. A dash C is nothing but y into the angle that is pi by 2 plus now we have to determine db So, if you look at the triangle B dash D B right the D to B dash is nothing but Y this length we know this angle is 90 degrees that is B dash D B is 90 degrees and uh, we know that uh, D B B dash is nothing but this angle is theta by 2 and we want to find out what is this distance D B. Okay. 
this is nothing but y cot theta by 2 right db is nothing but so if you look at uh, the condition for neutrality then ac dash should be equal to db db we have found out ac dash we have found out let us equate the two so y cot theta by 2 must be equal to y into pi by 2 plus pi by n minus theta by 2 these two must be equal so you will get uh, the condition for neutrality as pi by 2 this must be equal to 0 right now as a designer you have the choice of choosing this n okay if you choose a particular n there is a corresponding theta that will give you neutral burning right for a particular value of n there is a particular value of uh, theta that will give you neutral burning and you can get that value of theta using this equation let us call theta n as the angle that gives neutral burning then if you have an angle theta greater than theta n it will be regressive burning and theta less than theta n it will be progressive burning if you look at uh, this figure here you will see that uh, beyond this point as far as it is going up to this point b double dash there is a decrease in burning surface area that is possible right after this point this entire curve a dash b dash moves parallel and therefore it will only be progressive burning after that okay so up to the point b dash b double dash you can have neutral burning beyond which it is not possible to have any neutral burning and the grain will become a progressive burning grain okay and this portion here is what is known as the saliva loss okay so you can uh, solve this equation and get various values of uh, the theta n for different uh, point star grain which is tabulated here if you have n theta n for a 5 point star grain 62.2 will give you neutral burning So you get 
various angles increasing uh, from 5 it is 62 to 12 it will be 85 okay. Now we have talked about uh, how it can be progressive up to point uh, B double dash here in this figure I said it can be neutral progressive or regressive after that it will only be progressive right. In this figure here what I have plotted is burning perimeter versus y by l burning perimeter by l and on the x axis it is y by l. So, this is a non dimensional plot irrespective of uh, what size of the grain you have you can use uh, this plot. So, if you see here the point uh, uh, B double dash prime that I was talking about in the previous slide okay, corresponds to this web burning of around 0 0.6 up to this you can have uh, regressive, neutral and progressive beyond which it will only be progressive this uh, dashed line that you have here corresponds to a cylindrical grain. If you had a cylindrical grain you would have had it being progressive all through, but if you have a star grain with a n of 6 then uh, you can have neutral burning up to some point and after which you can have a progressive burning okay. Now this uh, tells us that if you depending on the uh, y by l you, you can have up to a certain portion only neutral burning right and uh, what we also need to keep in mind is what is the sliver loss that accompanies it okay. Uh, if you look at the previous figure here you would be tempted to say if I have a grain stopping somewhere here if I have burning only up to y by l of around 0 0.8 it will be very advantageous because you have neutral burning for most of the portion. But the other factor is if you stop it at a y by l of around 0 0.8 you see here the sliver loss, sliver loss is slightly higher and if you burn it further the sliver loss tends to reduce on the axis here you have sliver loss by L square here you have port area by L square and the x axis is again y by L this is again for a 6 uh, point star if you see the port area is increasing as you go from 0 to a y by L of 0 0.6 but uh, the sliver loss fraction is reducing. So, if you stop it early then you will have a higher sliver loss which is again not an advantageous thing you want to minimize this sliver loss ok. So, as such uh, in a sense the design is constrained you want to get the thrust time curve that you want you also want to have neutral burning for as far as possible because then your structural utilization will be better. And uh, you need uh, sliver loss to be as minimal as possible all this in a sense are conflicting at some point ok. So, and you need to find out for each particular grain which is the best possible design right. Now what we had discussed here is uh, something like uh, two dimensional geometry right. We said that uh, the along the length the same uh, geometries repeat right we have taken a cross section and we said along the length the same cross section repeats itself. So, this is something like a two dimensional grain we could get uh, all the uh, parameters that we wanted namely how long will it burn neutral how long will it be progressive all that by doing a simple uh, analysis. But if it were a three dimensional geometry as shown here uh, this is a, a finocoil this is a conocoil ok 
these are three dimensional geometries that is as you go from uh, the nozzle end to the head end the same geometry is not repeating itself. This is a slightly difficult I mean it is not uh, easy to do this uh, based on uh, simple analysis that we have done you need uh, some computational strategies to find out how the burning surface area is evolving with time ok. Then you will be able to calculate uh, how uh, whether you can have uh, neutral burning up to some length or not right. And people have done this uh, before. So, for a particular configuration you can uh, look at uh, how long you can have neutral burning. In the case uh, we had considered neutral burning was possible up to 60 percent of the web thickness for a 6 point star grain right. Now let us look at uh, other possible uh, grain configurations and uh, how long you can have uh, neutral burning. If you have an end burning grain what would be the extent it is 100 percent right. So, you can have 100 percent of the web as neutral burning then if you have a star grain depending on the number of star points that you have it can vary from 30 to 60 percent and uh, if you have uh, conic oil that we just saw it can range from 50 to 90 percent and phenicol these are uh, two dimensional geometries this is in fact a one dimensional geometry these are two dimensional and these two are three dimensional geometries. So, if you go for a three dimensional geometry uh, you could have uh, a slightly larger compared to a two dimensional one, but the end burning is the best that is you can have 100 percent of the uh, web as neutral burning. What it will do if you can design such a grain is not only are you going to utilize your structure uh, very effectively right, but uh, you are also going to operate it at a same pressure for uh, the entire burn time. So, your uh, ISPs will be optimal also and in addition you can load a lot more propellant right the propellant loading will increase. If you have any other kind of geometry namely uh, port burning configuration there will be a certain uh, fraction of the port that will be empty. So, your propellant loading will be lower and uh, therefore, uh, you will lose out on in some sense the uh, structural factor right that is what is the fraction of the structural weight that is required to hold certain amount of propellant. If that is as small as possible then your what the payload you want to carry will keep on increasing right. So, it would be nice to have an end burning grain from all these considerations, but if you look at the burn rate requirement for these the burn rate requirement will be phenomenal if you work it out uh, it will be very large. So, therefore, 
in a sense we are not able to get those kind of burn rates and which is forcing us to go towards a uh, port burning configuration and that then we are looking at all these kind of geometries to give us uh, neutral burning up to a certain extent of uh, burn uh, web or a certain extent of web fraction okay. In this class we looked at uh, uh, how to look at what is happening when the propellant is burning in a steady fashion. Uh, if you notice uh, while the propellant has to be switched on and also when this pro pro propellant has to be uh, at the end of burning there is a non steady burning that is if you look at the uh, thrust time curve. We have considered how it operates in this zone. We still need to find out what happens in these two portions. Okay, uh, we'll do that in the subsequent class. And uh, there was a question that was posed some time back, wherein you had asked me what happens as the propellant burns. There is more free volume, right? So, should not the pressure drop and how do we account for it right because the free volume is increasing and therefore, uh, the concern was the pressure would drop and how do we account for it. We will also discuss that in the subsequent class ok. Thank you.